In this session, you will learn how to troubleshoot the Kumi hydraulic control system in the field for hydraulic leaks and fluid system malfunctions. Some of the problems you will encounter will be minor in nature, easily found, and will not require shutdown during repair. Other problems will be of major importance and will require that the system be shut down until the problem is found and repaired. Because the system is complex, it is impossible to cover every leak and malfunction situation that you will find in the field. However, the information that you receive from this training program can make you aware of the most frequent problem areas. This information will enable you to troubleshoot the system and find the problem faster. This means less downtime. You've been given a workbook which looks like this. Whenever you are to use this workbook, you will see this sign appear on the screen. Turn to page one in your workbook and look at the objectives for this program. This list of objectives shows you what you will learn. As the program progresses, you will see information related to these objectives. Then you will be tested to see if you understand this information. From now on, when you use the workbook, it will be necessary for you to stop the playback unit. To do this, you press the pause or stop key on the playback unit when you hear a tone like this. Be sure you press the key only when you hear the tone. To restart the playback unit, you press the play or pause key again. This allows the program to continue. Okay, let's begin. Normally, a fluid leak in the system is detected by watching the flow meter on the driller's panel. If the flow meter indicates a fluid flow when no functions are being performed or if it continues to run and does not stop after a function is performed, this generally indicates that there is a leak in the system. Once you have determined that there is a leak, you should begin a check of the system to try to find the location of the leak. The first thing to do is to make a thorough visual inspection of the surface equipment. You do this by carefully examining the hydraulic control manifold and accumulators to see if you can find a broken line in the system, a fluid leak at any of the fittings, or a relief valve that is dumping too soon. If no leak is found, next, check the jumper hoses and hose reels to see that all junction box connections are tight and that no hoses are damaged. Sometimes a bad connection at a hose reel RBQ junction box will result in a leak. Examine the connections both outside and inside the hose reels to be certain that they have a firm seat. While at the hose reel, check the hose reel manifold to make certain that all of the valves are in the center position. Also, make sure that the needle valve to the manifold pressure supply shutoff is tightly closed. If this valve is left open when the junction box is connected to the reel, it will allow fluid pressure to be forced back through one of the surface regulators venting into the tank or through the regulator in the hose reel, thus indicating a leak in the system. If you find this valve in the open position, then close it and check the flow meter again to see if the fluid flow has stopped. If this procedure does not prove successful in locating and stopping the leak, you should return to the driller's panel and begin an item by item check of the system. Upon returning to the driller's panel, switch the pod selector valve to operate the system on the other pod. For example, if you are operating on the blue pod, switch over to the yellow pod. This will tell you if the leak is in one side or both sides of the system and will let you begin to isolate the leak. If the leak stops when you change from the blue to yellow pod, then you know that the leak is located somewhere in the blue side of the system.
If the leak does not stop when you switch control pods, this tells you that the leak is either below the control pods or somewhere in the hydraulic control manifold. Let's take an example and say that the flow meter stopped when you changed from the blue to the yellow pod. This tells you that the leak is somewhere in the blue side of the system. And since you made a visual inspection of the surface equipment earlier, this means that the leak is probably sub C. If conditions permit, you should now change back to the blue pod and try to isolate the exact location of the leak. Do this by blocking each function one by one, allowing plenty of time for the function to operate. You should watch the flow meter very carefully while blocking each function to see whether or not the leak stops. If the flow meter does stop when a given function is blocked, then you have isolated the leak. It is somewhere in that specific function. Since you are still not certain exactly where the leak is, you should next lower a TV camera to the stack. Then, unblock the leaking function and watch the TV screen to see if you can see the exact location of the leak. The leak will show up in the water as a white mist seeping from the leaking area. If the leak is coming from the pod, this indicates either a bad regulator or SPM valve in the pod. If this leak is bad enough, you can pull the pod and make the necessary repairs. Always use the schematic drawing to make certain you are working on the correct valve and follow the repair procedures as outlined in the sub-C manual. If the leak is below the pod and the problem is serious enough, you have two choices. You can either send a diver down to make the necessary repairs or pull the stack and repair the leak on the surface. If the leak is not of a serious nature, you can simply leave the valve for that function in the block position and wait until the next time the stack is brought to the surface and then make the necessary repairs. Before we go any further, let's review the information we've covered so far. Turn to page two in your workbook. Here you see your first self-check. There are 17 questions for you to answer. When you hear the tone, stop the playback unit. When you have finished answering the questions, start the playback unit again, and we will discuss your answers. Now let's check your answers. If you could not answer some of the questions, write the answers in when we give you the correct response. If you answered some of them wrong, change your answers to the correct answer we give you. These will be valuable troubleshooting notes for you to refer to. The answer to number one is flow meter. This will be your primary indication of any leaks in the system. You should have answered number two with the words visual inspection. Always make a visual inspection of the surface equipment first, looking carefully for broken lines and leaking fittings. Number three, be certain to check all hoses to make certain they are not damaged. Also check all junction box connections to make sure they are tight and that they are firmly seated. The answer to number four is needle valve. 
This valve should be closed any time the jumper hose is connected to the hose reel. If it is not tightly closed, it will allow fluid pressure to bleed through the system. The answer to questions five and six is true. If you do not find a leak during your visual inspection, you return to the driller's panel to begin an item by item check of the system. You begin this check by switching the pod selector valve to operate the system on the other pod. Question seven is also true. If the leak stops when you change pods, you have isolated the leak in one side of the system. Number eight, if the leak does not stop when you switch control pods, then you know that the leak is either below the control pods or somewhere in the hydraulic control manifold. Number nine, the best way to tell if one of the functions is leaking is to block each function one by one. The answer to number 10 is TV camera. This is the best way to determine the exact location of a subsea leak. Number 11. An underwater leak will show as a white mist seeping from the leak area. The answers for number 12 are regulator and SPM valve. These are the two most frequent sources of leaks in pods. You should have answered number 13 with the words, pull the pod. Most repairs can be made very quickly once the pod is on the surface. The answer to number 14 is schematic. Always use the schematic to ensure that you are working on the correct part. Number 15. Be certain to follow the repair procedures as outlined in the subsea manual. This manual is intended to help you make the repairs correctly and as quickly as possible. Always refer to the manual for repair procedures before you start the job. There are two answers for number 16. A serious leak below the pods can be repaired by one, sending a diver down to the stack, or two, by pulling the stack and making the repairs on the surface. The answer to number 17 is block. When a valve is left in block, the function remains in its last position and the fluid pressure is relieved from the lines going to that function. Now let's continue. In the last section of the program, we looked at troubleshooting the system when the leak was isolated in one side of the system. You will remember that the flow meter stopped when we switched from one pod to the other. Next, we will consider some troubleshooting hints to follow if the flow meter does not stop when the pod selector is switched. If the flow meter does not stop when the pod selector is switched to the other pod or when all functions are blocked, you should begin your check at the hydraulic control manifold with a master fluid return line to the tank. This is done by disconnecting the line at one of its union fittings to see if there is a fluid return in the line. If there is a fluid return in this line, this indicates that one of the pilot valves or regulators is leaking.
Be certain to check all pilot valves to make sure they are squarely in the block position or fully opened or closed. Sometimes a half-cocked valve will allow fluid to leak by the valve. If all the valves are fully thrown, next disconnect the discharge line from each pilot valve one at a time. If fluid exhausts from one of these valves after the discharge line has been disconnected, then the valve is bad and should be replaced with a new one. If the discharge lines on the pilot valves do not show any signs of leaks, then disconnect the discharge lines on the fluid regulators in the same manner, checking for a fluid discharge. Any fluid exhausts from the fluid return side of a regulator will indicate that the regulator is bad and should be replaced. For our next example, we will assume the system is operating normally and a button is pushed to perform a function. The flow meter begins to measure the fluid but then continues to run and does not stop at the number of gallons that is required to operate that function. Remember, the key words are continues to run. It is important to note that each time a function is operated, it will not take exactly the same amount of fluid as listed on the fluid capacity chart. It can vary either way of the listed capacity necessary to operate the function. However, if the flow meter continues to show a fluid flow after the time required for the function to perform, then there is a leak somewhere in that function. One possible cause is foreign material or trash in the SPM valve seat causing the valve to stay open and bleed fluid through the system. The best way to check for trash is to operate the valve several times to try and wash out the foreign material. After operating the valve several times, observe the flow meter to see if the leak has stopped. Next, go to the hydraulic control manifold and check the one inch line in the jumper hose to the standby pod. This will tell you whether or not the shuttle valve for that function is leaking. If it is leaking, there will be a fluid return to the surface through this hose. In other words, the fluid will be flowing down through the operating pod, leaking by the function's shuttle valve, and returning to the surface through the hose to the standby pod. This fluid return will indicate a faulty shuttle valve. The leak can be stopped by blocking that function in the desired position and then leaving it until repairs can be made later. This procedure also applies for a preventer which is leaking from the open to close side. If these procedures do not stop the leak, the problem is most likely caused by either a broken line, a bad SPM valve, or a bad seal in the function. As we noted earlier, the best way to determine which of these is the problem is to lower a TV camera to the stack and observe the system in operation. Any fluid leak should be easily seen as a white mist flowing from the leaking area. If the leak is in the pod, the pod can be retrieved to the surface and repaired. If the leak is somewhere on the stack, you send a diver down to make the necessary repairs or pull the stack, pressure test to locate the leak, and then repair it on the surface. Let's check again to make sure you understand the information that we have covered in this segment of the program. Turn to page five in your workbook. When you hear the tone, stop the playback unit. Then answer the questions beginning on page five in your workbook. Ready? Press the stop key when you hear the tone. 
Now let's check your answers. You should have answered number 18 with master fluid return line. This is where you begin your search for a leak if the flow meter does not stop after switching pods and blocking all functions. Number 19. If the fluid is still running in the return line after all functions are blocked and the pods have been switched, there is a leak in one of the pilot valves or regulators. For number 20, you should have written the words half cocked or partially open. A half cocked valve will allow fluid to leak by the valve. Number 21. The best way to check to see if a pilot valve is leaking is to disconnect the discharge line from the valve. If fluid exhausts from the valve after disconnecting the discharge line, then the valve is bad and should be repaired or replaced. The answer to number 22 is fluid regulators. These are checked in the same way as the pilot valves, by disconnecting the discharge line. Number 23. If the flow meter continues to indicate a fluid flow after the time required to perform the function, this shows that there is a leak somewhere in that function. The answer to number 24 is C. It is possible to flush trash out of a valve by opening and closing the valve several times. Number 25. If fluid is returning to the surface through the one inch hose to the standby pod, this indicates a faulty shuttle valve in that function. Now let's continue. Up until this point, we have been concerned with fluid leaks. Now we will look into some possible malfunctions which can occur in the hydraulic fluid system. The first item we will consider is a slow reaction time in the operation of a function. For instance, if we push a button to operate a particular function that we know is supposed to take 22 seconds, but the operation takes 60 seconds, then we know that there is a malfunction somewhere in the system. This problem will most likely be caused by low accumulator pressure, a bad junction box hose connection, a partially plugged pilot line, or air in the system. First, check the gauges to see if you have the proper operating pressures. If you do not have the required pressures, then check the pumps to make certain they are operating properly. And check the fluid tank to make sure you have fluid in the system. If the readback gauges still do not show the correct pressures after the regulators are adjusted, check to see if the shuttle valve on the manifold is leaking. This causes fluid to leak past the shuttle and out the other pod. Next, check the accumulators. Always make certain the shutoff valves between the accumulators and the hydraulic control manifold is open. If all pressures are good and you can find nothing wrong with the accumulators or the hydraulic control manifold, next check all surface hose connections. If the RBQ junction boxes are not tightly seated, they can restrict the flow rate of the fluid through the connection and thus cause the function to operate slowly. If you have checked all connections and the pressure in the system is good, then the final thing to do is to pull the pod and check the pilot lines for sludge which may have settled out of the hydraulic fluid or for air in the lines. This can be accomplished by disconnecting each line at the pod one at a time. As each line is disconnected, it should be flushed out by forcing new fluid through it. Another malfunction you may encounter is no flow meter indication when a function button is pushed. This can be caused by one of the following. No accumulator or pilot pressure. Failure of the valve on the hydraulic control manifold to shift. 
a pilot or main fluid line is plugged with trash, there is a bad SPM valve, or the flow meter is not working properly. Before you begin your troubleshooting procedures, you should always press the test button on the driller's panel to make certain that the lights in the function buttons are working properly. Sometimes these lights burn out and will not indicate the position of a function. If the light is burned out in the function you are trying to operate, the function may already be in the desired position. Thus, you will not get a fluid flow indication when you push the function button because it is already in that position. First, let's troubleshoot for no accumulator or pilot pressure. Normally, the gauges on the driller's panel will give you an indication of where this problem is located. If you've been unable to solve the problem at the driller's panel, you will have to go to the hydraulic control manifold and begin looking there. When you get to the hydraulic control manifold, the first thing to do is to double check the flow meter on the driller's panel. This is done by operating the function again while monitoring the flow meter on the hydraulic control manifold. It is possible for the impulse unit which sends the flow meter signal to the driller's panel to malfunction. A faulty circuit or a bad impulse unit might keep the flow meter on the driller's panel from working even though fluid was actually flowing through the system. Another way to check for a bad flow meter is the regulator gauge for that function. You can always tell whether or not a function operates by watching the regulator pressure after you push the button to operate the function. If the pressure falls 300 to 500 PSI after the button is pushed and then comes back up after the time required to operate the function, then you will know the function has been performed regardless of flow meter action. Next, check the air regulator and the electrical supply to make sure that the proper energy is getting to the hydraulic control manifold. Check the fluid level in the tanks and check the pumps and their pressure switches to make certain they are in the proper operating condition. If the fluid in the tanks is run dry, the triplex pump may have to be primed again before you can get the system back into operation. Also, check all filters to make certain that they are not plugged with trash. Don't forget to check the nitrogen precharge in the accumulator bottles. This is done by bleeding the fluid from the bottles back into the tank. Then, check each bottle separately to make sure that each has the proper nitrogen precharge. Next, we will give you some troubleshooting hints for what to do if the valve on the hydraulic control manifold fails to shift when the button on the driller's panel is pushed. The first item to check is the air pressure to the system. Too little air pressure is one of the biggest causes of unsatisfactory operation and valve malfunction. Check the air gauge for excessive pressure drop. If the gauge shows less than 80 PSI or an excessive pressure drop during operation, there is not enough air pressure to operate the system satisfactorily. If the air pressure is okay, check the hydraulic control manifold for an obstruction to the valve handle. Sometimes people hang things over the handles and forget to remove them. These items can sometimes prevent the handles from turning. If you can easily operate the valve manually at the hydraulic control manifold, there are three other areas to check in troubleshooting this problem. Have the electrician check the button on the panel the electric solenoids and power relays to the valve. Check the valve itself to make certain that it is not faulty. The best way to do this is to simply replace the entire valve body assembly. If the function then works properly, you will know that the valve needs to be repaired.
If a plugged pilot or main fluid line is preventing a function from being performed, the only way to solve the problem is to disconnect the hose at the pod and flush the line with clean fluid. If there is a bad SPM valve preventing a function from operating, the only solution for this problem is to pull the pod and replace the valve. Always be certain that you use the schematic in the sub-C manual to locate the correct SPM valve before making any repairs. It's always better to double check to be sure you are replacing the correct valve rather than to run the pod back down and then discover that you replaced the wrong one by mistake. Now let's take your final self-check to see if you have understood the information that we have covered in the last part of this program. Turn to page 7 in your workbook. When you hear the tone, stop the playback unit. Answer the questions on pages 7 through 10. When you finish, press the pause key to start the playback unit again, and we will discuss your answers. Now let's check your answers. The answer to number 26 is D. Slow operation of a function may be caused by one or a combination of these problems. For number 27, you should have placed an X by C. All of the other items should be checked when troubleshooting for slow function reaction time. There were two answers for you to fill in for number 28. You should have filled in one of the blanks with, the flow meter is not working properly. You should have filled the other in with, there is no accumulator or pilot pressure. Number 29. Before you assume that a function is not working, you should always press the test button on the driller's panel to make certain that all of the lights in the panel are working. The answer for number 30 is A, gauges. For 31, you should have written hydraulic control manifold. That is where you go if you are unable to solve your problem at the driller's panel. False is the answer for number 32. You should always double check the driller's panel flow meter with the flow meter on the hydraulic control manifold. The answer for number 33 is B. Number 34. Clogged filters can also cause a malfunction in the hydraulic system. You should have answered number 35 as true. You must bleed the fluid pressure from the accumulators before you can check the nitrogen precharge. A is the correct answer for number 36. Too little air pressure is one of the most common causes of valve malfunction. Number 37 is D. Number 38 is true. It's best to replace the entire valve and repair the faulty one later. Number 39, the only way to deal with a plugged pilot or main fluid line is to disconnect the hose at the pod 
and flush the line with clean fluid. The answer to number 40 is true. Always remember to use the schematic to locate the correct valve before beginning any repairs. In this program, we have given you a number of procedures to follow in troubleshooting for hydraulic leaks and malfunctions. This information, along with your subsea manual, should enable you to troubleshoot the most frequent leak and malfunction problems that arise in the system. It should be pointed out that a regular maintenance program will eliminate many of your problems before they occur. If you keep the system clean, the equipment in good repair, and perform the maintenance procedures as outlined in the subsea manual, your Kumi hydraulic control system will provide you with many years of trouble-free, dependable service. In closing, we would like to remind you that Kumi engineers and service personnel are available 24 hours a day anywhere in the world. At Kumi, we build the best. There is no equal.